Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Forest Green Division CPLC meeting. Uh, my name is Paul Rowe, the Community Relations and Community Mobilization Officer here. You know, I think almost everyone uh, at our head table. Uh, Co chair is Marilyn Mott, Superintendent Fess, and Inspector uh, Little. We're just going to start with uh, Detective Thompson and Smoke. We'll go around the room, provide a very uh, brief introduction so we have some context on uh, who everyone is. Uh, Detective Constable Tracy Stein, I'm a crime analyst here at 43 Bridge. Uh, Please Constable Back Service, Crime Prevention, and Auxiliary Day as an officer. Auxiliary PC Bergowski, I'm an auxiliary officer here at 43 Division. Jennifer Johnson, I'm a detective sergeant here at 43 Division. And uh, Mike Marks, Debbie O'Clark, the Association Treasurer. Right? I'll let you get to mention. And I'm a child from the Tuesday team. Susan Ackerman from Curran Hall Community Association. Back to what's up. Uh, Caitlin Mitchell from Council of Garden Open Culture. Ken Merrill from the West Bridge Community Association. Maria Palazzo from Anchor Montreal from the Canadian Lions Branch. Rob Cameron, Scarborough Carp and Danza Community. John Major from Toronto Green Housing. Vanessa Levin from Green Housing. I'm Bruce Schnorr with the City of Toronto, I'm the District Manager with Licensing and Enforcement. Mike Stones, City of Toronto, Bottle Enforcement, and uh, District Manager of Scarborough. Cecilia Gallivan, I support the Boulevard area and the Prince of Paul Homes. Carolyn Brady, CPLC presenter. I'm Donna Woods, a uh, clerk here at 43 Division. Kathy Wolf, uh, with the Village Community Association. Greg Wolf, here with the Village Community Association. Okay, Marilyn, you're up. Okay. Take it away. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. And the first on the agenda is Tracy Hughes. Very good, the crime staff. Thank you. All right, we're going to go over some crime maps and some crime stats. And we'll start with, uh, I brought this up last month, but I'm going to do this for a couple of months because there are people that haven't been here in the past. So there were some questions raised uh, back in the January meeting about what exactly the patrol area was, because I've actually done the mass fire patrol areas. So it's basically a, a designated zone that officers are dispatched to. And just so that everybody can have a reference point of where maybe they live in the division, I should like them up and I've given you the boundaries of all. And the first thing we're going to talk about here is the collisions for the last month. This might look like a scary map, but I want you to keep in mind that we've had a really, really bad winter. And uh, this is reflected in our maps and, and on a weekly basis, too, although it's a little bit better in today's meeting of crime management. See, that's only a month of yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as I said before, um, I've got them divided in this particular instance by the type of uh, collision they are. Of course, you've got the non reportable collisions. This is a collision that's under $1,000 damage and has no injuries. Then you've also got um, the fail to remain collisions. That's fairly self explanatory. Somebody took off. We've got uh, personal injuries where somebody was hurt. And we've got property damage injuries where basically you can be damaged, that kind of thing. Vehicles are damaged, but not people. And as you can see, for the most part, it's our major routes that we're seeing uh, the majority of them in. And I'm sorry that Ron's not here this month because I think the circle's a little bigger. <laughs> 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 so um, before I move on, I just wonder if anybody has any questions about this map and, and any of the dots on it. And did you want to say something to you? We did uh, just look at a map the last week. And when you look at just the last week, it, it is uh, significantly less than this when he was looking at uh, what we've seen recently, uh, what I've instructed my officers to do is whenever they have uh, unassigned time to spend it in the house near the road area, of course, you know how we try to get there. Again, there's no real one area that's greater or, or worse, depending on where it looks like, uh, than any other at the minute. But that uh, street it has certainly, in the previous three weeks, especially in the start of the time center, has seen a higher volume of collisions. So we're going to continue outside of the uh, Scarborough Town Center a little bit and along in Alismere and for the high contract for that reason because it, it, we have seen a continuation of 
And we'll move on. Our next map is uh, the 43 divisions of lake and interest that have occurred in the last month. And as you can see, it's rather sporadic. There's no one particular area that seems worse than another. But I do want to say that in the last week in particular, we've made two really, really good arrests of uh, two individuals that are doing quite a number of breaking and interest and entries in cars in this particular division. So we're very pleased about that. Um, any questions? Any and yeah, one of the one of the successes that we had this week was not solely the part of some of the police work done, uh, but it was not solely the work of the police. Uh, we did get that call that we were always looking for from a citizen who saw this gentleman going from car to car on their street. Two things to learn from this: when you call us, we can. Uh, get their occasion in time to make an arrest, and we did on this occasion. The second thing to learn from that is that the gentleman was not breaking into cars per se. He was not breaking glass to get into the car. He was not prying door handles. He was checking them for whether they were locked or not. If they were locked, he moved on. Uh, so two, two things to learn from that. Watch your cars, and if you see someone in your street doing that, call 911. It is something that we are very interested in because uh, we want you to keep your heart in cash. Our next map has to do with robberies. And uh, these are the robberies we've seen in the last month by patrol area. And as you can see, there's just one area that, that plays out to me, and that's around the Scarborough Town Center area. But just because those dots are in that area doesn't mean they occurred at Scarborough Town Center. And uh, for the most part, we've been seeing street robberies, uh, kids who lose their phones, that kind of thing. We did have a number of holdups in January and February, bank holdups, and a couple of convenience stores. And I'm really happy to say that the holdup squad, uh, with the assistance of some of our 43 division officers, made numerous arrests. I think there were five arrests in the last couple of weeks in regards to those holdups that we were seeing. Did you want to comment, sir? You know, this is another one, believe it or not, where we have heard that some convenience stores in particular don't call us up all the time when they've been uh, robbed. And again, we want to partner with the community to make it a safer place. However, we need that partnership uh, to do that. We need interaction between victims of crime and uh, police. So if, if you are a victim of crime, reach out to us and we can do everything within our power to assist you. But if you don't tell us, likely we won't know. And the next map and our last map is to do with vehicle thefts. And uh, we have been seeing a trend for a while of Hondas and Toyotas being stolen, but I'm happy to say that that seems to have tailed off a bit. We're still seeing a few, but not in great majority as we have been seeing. And um, our numbers actually for auto thefts are about the same as they were this time last year. I think maybe just up slightly now, which we'll get to in the next slide. So um, if there's anything you wanted to add to it or start yourself as well. Keep your cars <laughs> Okay, and these are our uh, seven major crime indicators. This is year to date. The first column represents where we were as of this date. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't change that. That actually is till March 13th. I just threw some numbers in there quickly before I came in. My apologies for that. Um, 2013 is your first column. 2014 is the second column. And then, of course, we've got our percentage change up or down. Now, these figures are basically um, the Canadian Justice Center for Statistics, I think they're called determines that <coughs> the seven major crime indicators will indicate uh, what kind of crime levels we have in our communities. They have been doing this for about 30 years, so that we use these as an indicator of uh, where we stand. And as you can see, sometimes it looks a little worse than it is. Uh, we did have one murder in the, for the last three months. It reflects as 100%, but you have to remember when you're dealing with small numbers, you're going to get big percentage increases. Um, that particular, uh, we talked about this at the last meeting, the individual, um, uh, I think it was Larson, wasn't it? Yeah, it was an individual. It happened on the 29th. It was an 87 year old that lost his life to his 50 uh, something year old son 
committed suicide, uh, and in doing so caused the unintended death of his father and his own side and virtue of that. So uh, very, very sorry. And uh, as far as the sexual assaults go, uh, we have been seeing an increase in the trends. This doesn't necessarily mean that there are more sexual assaults occurring. It sometimes reflects that there are more sexual assaults being reported now. So keep that in mind when you see these. Um, assaults are about the same. Uh, break and enters were up just slightly, but I'm hoping to see that figure come down a bit uh, because of our arrest just this week. And uh, robbery, we're still uh, holding really well on robbery figures, down 28% from where we were last year at this time. And uh, theft of older vehicles, like I said, we're up just a touch, but once again, big numbers or sorry, small numbers, big percentages, so it, it actually it says 7%, but it's really only a difference of two things, or two vehicles. And then our total puts us at uh, just below 3% where we were last year at this time. So we're still trending downward, and as I said, but I hope that this uh, will be reflected a little bit better next month with our uh, stats from the break Did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, we, we have to remember that as we report as you can see, we're, we're comparing between 2014 and 2013. Uh, when, you, when you compare 2013 to 2012, we saw overall 12% reduction in crime. And then when we, when we looked at 2013 over 2012, sorry, it was 2012 over 2011, it was 12%. 2013 over 2012, it was 17% reduction in crime. And now we're seeing 3% reduction in time. So well, over the three years, when you're looking at those, Drops, it's very significant that uh, drop in crime that we're seeing in Southeast Scarborough, and we're very happy to see it continue. All right, and just I uh, just wanted to talk about uh, a couple of crime trends. Um, the net nominate, I'm going to get Guy to talk about that because we have kind of duplicated our efforts today, so I'll call him up in a minute. But I did want to talk about a couple of things. We've got a new fraud that seems to be occurring all over the place. It's happening in Durham region. It's happening here in Toronto. And basically, uh, these individuals are calling on people. They tend to target those who have uh, a not so great grasp of the English language. They claim to be from Revenue Canada, and they say that you owe money on your contract. And they actually have these individuals uh, buy pay the PayPal cards and then deposit them, and that's how they're defrauding them of thousands of dollars, pretending they're from uh, Revenue Canada. So there are um, things on the Revenue Canada website that indicate what you should do if you receive one of these calls, and they definitely might be reported. Also reported to us, because sometimes we can follow it up and, and catch these individuals. There's a number of them. And uh, the other thing I just wanted to talk about was a great arrest that we made a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had an individual at Scarborough Town Center uh, basically sexually assaulting young girls, uh, going around and grabbing their uh, breasts. And uh, through some really good police work and some help from video and the community, we actually arrested this individual and uh, happy to say that. But part of that is that because normally women don't necessarily, you know, it's an embarrassing thing to have happen. I had it happen many years ago when I was a teenager. And you're so embarrassed about it, you don't want to have to talk about it. But if you don't talk about it, then we're not going to catch these people. And we actually had three people that had been assaulted by this man, and one of them never reported it, but then chose to report it when she found out that, that he had actually assaulted two other women. So it just goes to show, and once again, what the superintendent said, uh, even however minor you seem to think it is, it's not minor to us, and uh, it can result in us actually making a really good arrest. And uh, Guy, do you want to tell us all about new nomination? Sure. I can see it properly. Uh, just for those watching, I'm Police Constable Guy Servers. I am the Crime Branching Officer here at 42 Division. And uh, this is a new trend, and Tracy and I kind of caught on to this very quickly. Um, it's neck nomination. And what basically it is, it's a drinking game. And it's an excessive drinking game. And uh, obviously, it involves uh, drinking large quantities of alcohol. But when you drink the large quantities of alcohol, you have to do some kind of stunt while you're doing it. So right now on Facebook, or we've seen things on Twitter, uh, this started in Australia. It's worked its way to the UK, and the trend is kind of like, we're going to start warming up soon here. We don't know if it's going to be coming over here. But the power of social media, uh, thousands of people can see these things daily. 
So there is a video um, online where there's a, I'll call him a gentleman, on top of a motorcycle that's moving with a uh, large tube and, and uh, with uh, vodka pouring down, and he's riding on the motorcycle. Now, he videotapes that, drinks a large point of alcohol, then your next thing to do is to go onto social media with that video, and you tag or nominate, where that's where the nominate comes from, two persons to go out and do the same thing. So it's almost like a pyramid type scheme where you get other people to do this. The problems we're running into just recently in Ireland and the UK, there's been several deaths of kids as young as 10 that have been getting involved with these types of things. Uh, it creates a problem for the press that are on social media. Do we want to talk about this or promote this or is this a public health issue? Um, because we don't want young kids who are on social media to say, hey, that sounds fun, let's go try this. So that's the concern right now. Uh, myself, and of course we have uh, you know Rob here. I don't know if he's seen anything in Canada yet with him. Um, so it only takes time for something to catch on, um, and we don't want this to catch on. So in your communities, if you do hear something about this, obviously uh, public health, police um, would want to know about these type of things. So it's a danger to the public also, but it's also a danger uh, to the person themselves. So uh, next, nominate. I did post uh, something at the back, so after you want to just kind of take a look at the article, it's there. In regards to those on, oh, sort of just that real quickly, it seems to be a trend that's also starting to go through some of the universities, like U of T. I've heard of it. I've heard it. I was in Ottawa a couple weeks ago. I heard of a case at Carleton. So if you know anybody's doing in the university, let the faculty know too, because there are regulations in universities against drinking in dorms, and, and they, they frown upon this stuff. So, yeah. sort of. So anyways, that's that. Uh, in regards to the uh, sexual assaults at Scarborough Town Center, uh, Paul, Paul Rowe and I, we actually uh, met with the uh, Scarborough Town Center. We meet every couple months. And they have new management there. And they also have new uh, search security manager there. So they're very up to speed. We're very cooperative with them. They're cooperative together. And if we have concern or they have concern, we've built that bridge so we can get the information out quickly. So as a result, the sharing information and teamwork resulted in the arrest there, so that was a good thing there. Um, on social media, just on crime prevention, um, just this came from Passport Canada. Um, as a crime prevention officer, we hope that everyone would keep their passport locked up uh, in a secure place or in a spot like a safety security box. But for some reason, if you lose your passport, people used to come into the police station to report it. Uh, passport Canada wants you to go to them directly to report that passport uh, that you've lost. If it's been stolen, we as the police want to know about it. Um, take the Malaysian flight just recently. There's two ingredients that are passport is missing or stolen. So people can steal the identity. So we need to know. Uh, passport Canada needs to know. They have a website uh, if you're not too sure what to do. So you can always visit that. Um, one thing, and we kind of mentioned calling the police. And our dispatchers, I spoke to a few of our dispatchers recently about an incident. And one of the concerns was getting information from people who call. And again, I posted something up there also. Um, this is something that might go in your newsletters just to educate what they would need to do if they do call the police. So basically, we need to know. Uh, basically, the first thing we need to know is where something's happening, um, what's happening. If we need to have a description of what's happening, whether uh, someone's life's in danger or not. When did it take place? Because if it happened two weeks ago, it may not be as a priority as something that's going on right now. Who? You know, maybe you know who you may be a witness. Who's that person? Maybe you've seen them before. Um, if there's any weapons, uh, obviously weapons makes it a higher priority. Knife. Anything can be a weapon. Okay, someone's taking a table and hitting somebody. It's not a gun. It's not a knife, but it's still a weapon. So it makes it a higher priority call. And um, if there's any witnesses to it, or if you're a witness. Um, we've had calls where people just hang up, dispatchers try to call back, and no one's getting back. So sometimes we lose that information that we need. All that information I've like, posted on our Facebook pages. Our pages, we do have four pages here at 42 Division. Twitter, we've posted the messages. Um, speaking with Rob, it sounds like there's community members that have mentioned that they're, they're getting a lot of information from that. So that's good to get that feedback. All right, thank you. Thanks, Guy. <coughs> Concerns for the superintendent, inspector, officer. 
your opportunity to uh, talk about any concerns that you have. Um, there was a number of concerns raised in the last meeting. Unfortunately, uh, the traffic officer that was here at the last meeting is off this week with March break. But I can tell you that we have had uh, some enforcement done in the area that were in the areas that were mentioned, Lance Road, some of those areas, and there was concerns around uh, uh, traffic uh, in and around some of our schools that were mentioned at the last meeting. We have been and will continue to work on that when school starts again. Uh, and I'll get those uh, officers that are involved in that enforcement to be at the next meeting and uh, we'll go to give you more uh, definite statistics. Of course, when you're away on the staff search, there's a way as well. Uh, but we do have to uh, continue to work on those concerns that were raised in the last meeting. Is there any new concerns that you would like to bring to our attention, Susan? Um, I haven't witnessed this myself, but uh, I, it's been reported to me that uh, in, in our neighborhood, um, there, a street called Plover, Plover, uh, which is a dead end street that, that actually goes into, into the, uh, the parkland and the ravine behind Botany Hill. And um, there, there are, uh, in the afternoon, between 3, 4, 4, 5 o'clock, uh, there are a, a group of young men, um, three to six uh, fellows who tend to hang around there, uh, smoking, uh, as, as uh, the woman that told me, uh, dope, now I, I, I presume it's marijuana, but I'm uh, not sure uh, exactly what she means by dope, but um, um, whatever you smoke, it, uh, it, it makes people a little bit nervous anyway. Uh, so that a lot of people walk their dogs and uh, go into that area and, um, and with these this sort of gang of three to, three to six men, young men all together, um, they, they, aren't, they aren't threatening people or anything, but it's just it's a little bit unnerving. And uh, there are two cars that tend to get uh, parked down, down there, and I have the license number and so on. Uh, it's, uh, Susan, if I could get you to get Ron and put that on the air, if you could give that to Donna, yes. those two license plates, okay, I will. and we'll get that to Peter and make sure that we can walk with that. There, there is a house on Botany Hill that, uh, that we know of uh, okay. that has been dealing drugs. And, uh, we'd like to uh, appreciate a, a car going by there if possible. Any other concerns from anybody in neighborhoods? Jay? Yeah, the bus uh, situation, the people bus is uh, still at half on Lawrence, uh, between Ridgewood and uh, Star Spring Boulevard. Um, and it's, it's more so in the morning, uh, so that's rush up. So it's 6 to about 9, uh, 9 9.30, uh, 2 3 buses so sometimes just back to back. They, they've got the doors locked. They're not in service, but they're just parking there. And that street is still, it's just the one lane. So it becomes a hazard. Mr. Ainsley had said that he was going to look into that. Is that any? I would, uh, Councillor Ainsley is uh, elbowing right now. I'd yeah. certainly follow along with him to see yeah. if he has contacted the with regards to that. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, if you report back in the next meeting.
Sometimes these are just people who are annoying and who are doing that sort of high pressure sales tactic, but sometimes they're criminals who, who are trying to get into your house to steal things. So the wise thing to do is, is exactly what you've done, is to send them away. And if, if you do have concerns that they have raised that you want now to, to sort of put to bed, as it were, to ease your own mind, and then call somebody in that you trust uh, that you know is, is a professional to answer your questions or address the concerns. But uh, by all means, you don't certainly have to ever let anybody into your home. And if somebody is there to the point where you can't get rid of them, don't hesitate, hesitate at all to call us. If somebody's uh, making themselves such, such a nuisance and you can't get them off your property, call the police. Yeah, we're happy to feel threatened by these two people yesterday. Yeah, they were that type of push. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but it's a, it's a good thing to to bring the attention of the community. And so, uh, there are options, and certainly one of the options is not to let these people into your home. There are students that are going around, and they will try your front door. If you don't answer right away, they'll try the storm door, and they'll open it and be right there in your face. And if they can get in the other door, they'll meet you in your hallway. And somebody, a girlfriend's neighbor had that happen to her. She was coming down, answered the door, and when she came down the stairs, this guy was standing right, right there. The two I, would, I would suggest that that's one of the criminal types. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I would encourage if that ever happens, you call 911, because those people are, are breaking into your home. Uh, that's a criminal offense that you report on. It's one of the seven major crime indicators. So give us a call if that happens, absolutely. Okay. Just to throw out there, um, while we're talking about these kind of attempts, uh, be aware there's another increase in seniors with uh, pushy salespeople running around trying to get you to upgrade your water heaters and that kind of stuff again. Um, I sat in on a meeting last week, uh, a CARB regional meeting, and we're, we're seeing more and more in the GTA as a whole. So seniors, just be careful. There's more and more of that happening. Send them away. Ask for a phone number where you can call the office and book an appointment that goes through switchboard. <coughs> Never call a direct number to give you because it could be a sale going elsewhere. Just be due diligent. Yeah. It's just worth mentioning. It's on a rise again. No, absolutely. We had a, uh, an information uh, session this last month at yeah. one of our schools. Uh, it was titled Don't Be Scammed. Yeah. So it's online at the minute. If, if uh, you want to, to jump online on YouTube and uh, look that up, don't be scammed, you'll see that event. A lot of really good information about frauds that are taking place that are a little bit more elaborate than some of the granny uh, frauds and the grandson frauds that we've, that we've seen where they'll, somebody will phone you and say, I'm your grandson, I've been arrested in whatever town, you can send me some money for a lawyer. Uh, they're a little bit more elaborate than that. Some of the some great information in that session that took place. Uh, I got the data on that particular event, and we actually reached in upwards of 500,000 people through the live streaming that event. So excellent, excellent work was done. Excellent information at the actual meeting, and it actually reached out through the live stream to 500,000 plus people, and it's still there for you to uh, to look at and learn from. Can I add, if anybody can find a link to the event, if you want to email me or come see me, I'd be glad to forward it to you, so please ask. Thank you. Just while that, there are two good websites to go to. Um, one, the Government of Ontario, the Ministry of Consumer Services. They're very on top of, say, door to door. Uh, coming up shortly will be the law narrators that are going to be coming out soon because we're hoping that this will come out soon, but when that happens, they'll be out there uh, coming door to door. So um, 
they kind of post new things as they happen. You can also report that incident that you're involved in. They would like to know too, even if it's not criminal, it's nice to know where these things are happening. The second website is the Canadian Anti-Fraud uh, Center. And it's also, they list major frauds that are happening with statistics. And you can actually report to them too. And they keep tracks of stats also of the things that happen. So those are two good locations to get further information besides uh, the video that we have also. Guys, they also have good Facebook pages as well. If anybody's on Facebook yeah. and you don't want to go to their website, you can follow both organizations on Facebook, feel free. The problem is seniors are not going to do that. You're wrong. A lot of them, they, they, a lot of them, and I spoke to recently at the school. They don't even have a, a computer. Except and the number one increase online on Facebook right now is between the ages of 55 and 75. That that might be so, but it, 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 they're not. A lot of them are not. They're not aware. There's all the information that's available to help. Yeah. And I think these scams are going to continue for a while until yes. they get. The crooks get or whoever they are get tired. But what, what what I can suggest, Mike, is get them out to events that 43 Division puts on. Get them out to events that Scarborough Cart puts on, which I can I can funnel the information. Yeah. Get them out to events that CPAC puts on. I mean, CPAC, it, it is Fraud Prevention Month. I know they did an event last week in Scarborough in uh, West Scarborough for seniors and fraud prevention. The point is, we got to keep getting the flyers into the community centers where the seniors spend time, yeah. and then getting them out, and then saying, you know, you yeah. need to help yourself get out to these events. That's about all you can do at that point. And what we're talking about too uh, is these are actual frauds that are taking place via social media yeah. or via that electronic yeah. media. Yeah. So these seniors are, are being victimized when they're on computers. So yeah, those ones that, that you're talking about that are not, you know, even own a computer, they're safe from that particular type of, of fraud. They may be the ones that are victimized by the telephone, mm -hmm. um, but the ones that, that we were talking about in this event is is really uh, giving good information on how sometimes you're taking advantage of through social media. Not solely limited to that, but that's part of. That's part of it. Yeah. What they were saying is that. Uh, Few of them, the seniors, are at home while their daughters have work. So they left there. So the door to door part of the fraud people. Uh, yeah, so they're instructed not to open the door. <coughs> That's about the best thing that they can do. Yeah. I mean, but these door to door people are still around. Yeah. That one guy come and asked me to, to show him the old scam, the hydro bill. <coughs> And um, right there, I thought, you're not going to see it. I knew what he was talking about. So I told him, what's hydro? He says, you're in that dressing day. I said, I don't pay for that. So he walked away <coughs> and he kept looking back at it. Who doesn't pay? I, they're more trusting. I mean, my, my own mother almost found, and with the field I'm in, found victim to the grandparents scam a year ago. And I said, you do know this is fake. And she said, yeah, but there's a 1% chance. Who, who plays? cards and poker on a 1% chance, certainly not I. And I actually put her on hold and said, and and the response I gave to her was, did your grandson give you the, co the family code word? It was the word out of my mouth. And she said, no. I said, well, there's your 0% chance. The, the point I'm making at is the seniors, a lot of them are too trusting. They know 95%, 96%, and they're playing odds of 1%, 2%, 3%. <laughs> I mean, the best thing we can keep doing is educating and I mean, Randy can funnel you the information. I can funnel you the information. We're both part of that social media fraud working group that works with the with everybody from S FSOC to the Bank of Canada to anything. So if you're looking for information and you can't get it, please let me know, and I'll either I'll funnel it to you or I'll work with somebody to get it to you. Not a problem. And let's just keep educating. That's the best thing we can do. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Well, it's a good point though, Mike. Anybody else? Okay, okay on the agenda, and uh, Joseph is uh, on retreat today with his students. So I'm the only one. Oh.
public community mobilization here that you think? Sorry. Sure. I have a lot less than what we just started 10 minutes ago. I was going to speak about high pressure salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking? I'm wearing pants that I don't feel like. <laughs> this is uh, just the social media contacts. You have very well have them ready so we they have to pass them out. If anyone wants those, also uh, PPLC volunteer uh, Robert Cairns, as well as uh, Randy will be teaching on April 2nd for anyone that's interested in uh, social media basics. Okay? We'll send that around. That's consistently voluntary, but if anybody wants to do that, or just has an interest in it, by all means, uh, I'll stop walking around so you don't have to start. <laughs> We did, I think we were a victim of our own success. We didn't know how many sheep what, but if we're short, just save the last one and we'll run it through the photo copier. Okay. So if you'd like to sign up, you're more than welcome to. Don't feel pressured to at the same time. But uh, Mike, Mike had a very good point about not everyone being on a computer. I would argue that most people have access to a computer through the library. And you can certainly go, if volunteers here, get that message out, bring people to us, and let's get them trained. Mike, we do, just so you know, we do those sessions. Um, I don't run off a script and nor does Randy. Um, I basically cover some bases and depending on where the questions take it, where the discussion goes. So it's basically up to the people who attend those events and you'll, and you'll find I've done enough of these, they will drive where the discussion goes. They'll drive where the concerns go, whether it's fraud, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's stuff for the grandkids. And, and that's the best way to do it. We we did one at uh, Pope John Paul. We had over 60 people the last one we did. So you know, if you want to come out and learn, uh, please please do. Or, or pass on to anybody in your group. Just one to mention, and uh, there was Superintendent Pat and others on uh, a couple of Thursday nights ago. I guess don't be scammed, and then have the uh, privilege to go to the college as well. And there's another event uh, there. That, that was mentioned, and that was just to add to what's already been said. It's too good to be true, of course. Most likely it is. I would actually say it is. Uh, look for time limits on things, very short time limits. You can sign up, but I need it done by 3 this afternoon. There shouldn't be any hurry on that whatsoever. And thirdly, if they're trying to incorporate other family members or friends, they're probably heading towards a scam, okay? The other thing I wanted to mention was there is something now, uh, probably many don't know, something called a spook card. And I have told my mom, be careful, always be watching that call display. And uh, the problem is you can't necessarily rely on that now. The spoof card is $9.99, and I can change that call display to say anything that I feel like. Yep. So I can change that now. I can pull in Ron, the Rock can pull me for $110, and have this call display say CIBC Bank. Okay? So, you know, most likely it's not going to happen, but please tell everyone that if you can think of, be careful, obviously, yourself. Uh, if there's some concern in the bank, just go in and speak to someone in person, okay? Finally, that was supposed to be the last thing that just came in mind. I had an interesting stat, and that is true or false. Seniors are more likely to be victims of fraud than others. True. False. They're more likely to be victims of certain types of fraud. Yeah, certain types. Yeah. 35 and under, probably no surprise, social media. Middle age, we're getting a little bit desperate. Romance scams. Oh. Senior. <laughs> <laughs> Seniors, that's when we get into the high pressure sales tactics, as we said. You might have said, my, uh, people are at home, people are looking for someone to talk to, and they're calm during the day. So And uh, and, and uh, high pressure tactics and elder abuse fraud. Yeah. That's the other one. So a lot of senior abuse fraud, not, not to cut uh, fall off, comes from people they know, caregivers, family members, who defraud their savings as part of elder abuse. I personally just have a, a rule that I do not conduct business at my door. That's a good rule. And That's my rule too. I cross my threshold. If I'm doing something with the bank, I will walk into the bank. Yep. Yeah. That's my rule. Makes me uh, think bad meetings with drug addicts. But <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think I think the rule has to go further. That if your bank calls you on a marketing call, no disregard to the ladies at the bank. I've actually pulled myself off my bank's marketing list because I refuse to talk to anybody who cannot give me a direct phone number through a switchboard to call them back. I think you just got to hang up on people and say, if I want to talk to the bank, I'll walk in and talk to the bank. If I want to talk in to sell stocks, I'll walk in because what's happening is a lot of these people are calling up and they'll give you a number to call them back. It's a cell phone. It's a burner phone, even worse, and you can't trace it. 
So, you, you know, you got to... I think we freaked everybody out enough for one day. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. No, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is not just seniors. I've had the high pressure come up to me while I'm sitting on the house that hasn't been completed yet, telling me my brand new water heater needs replacement. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't even been gone yet. And, oh, but uh, they, they are there for that purpose to use the high pressure. <laughs> don't need to go away. You know, if you don't go away, I'm calling 911. Yeah. And then pull up your phone and say, by the way, smile. <laughs> See how fast they run. There you go. You say smile, you're on camera right now. I, I take the picture first and then show them I've got it. <laughs> it, it is concerned, and of course, uh, you know, the weather getting better, you might be at more I'll just mention about um, so Randy's not here either. I'll mention the um, basketball games in our anniversary. And if you refer to page five of the minutes, I'll just add a couple of things to that. Um, the <laughs> thing that says for the game with Jack Miner is tentative on the minutes, but it's firm now. <coughs> and um, add two sponsors, two more sponsors, uh, TV Bank and the Fox. They're all at my side of crossing. Um, and the cost of each game for players is free. That's police officers. We've got three, I think, that are coming. And the um, students and staff from the schools, uh, they're free because of playing. Spectators, $4 a person. And all spectators are welcome to come to the schools, the two schools that are in those minutes. Is there, is there anyone that doesn't have a copy of the minutes? I think that's probably it right for that. Well, is that it for that portion of the first part for the broadcast of the meeting? And then the businesses are paying $25. Okay. Is it all right to uh, stop as far as the transmission? Sure. I think it's